Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we're going to be talking about aviation gasoline. Many of the pipes on the ship are color-coded based on the fluid that's in them. All of the piping having to do with JP5, or aviation gasoline, is painted this purple color. So we're currently in space 2, TAC 204, TAC 2, TAC L. For those of you at home following along on your booklet of general plans, there's a link to our 1980s booklet of general plans in the description down below. So this plumbing continues up towards main deck and down. So we're going to be following the trunk that leads down to where the aviation gasoline is stored. Iowa-class battleships always had the ability to refuel aircraft, whether their own embarked float planes or helicopters that could land on board. Now, they didn't always embark aircraft themselves, but they could always refuel them. And uh, so this space we're going to has always existed as the uh, aviation gasoline space. And it's very, very separate from any of the other uh, fuel spaces that are used to actually power the ship um, or the auxiliary diesel generators or any of that sort of stuff. So the first thing you'll notice in this trunk, we're still on the second deck, is uh, there is an old ladder going up and a blanked off scuttle in the overhead. Initially, this trunk could be accessed from the flight deck and run straight down to where the aviation gasoline is stored. However, uh, at least by the 80s, when they had put the uh, new metal flight deck on the fantail, this got blanked over. And it could have even been earlier during the uh, Vietnam commission when the uh, fantail was originally modified for helicopters. She did carry helicopters before that, but there weren't any explicit modifications made for them. They just landed on the original peak deck. Uh, another thing to point out in this space, we've got uh, fuel lines coming down, painted purple, and we've got this uh, firefighting foam line. Red and green striped piping means that it is AFFF, and there is a mixing station back here on the fantail specifically for mixing the foam and the uh, fire main water to create AFFF, aqueous film forming foam, for both the aviation gasoline stored down below and for the flight deck where the helicopters are landing. This stuff is specifically designed to smother fuel-based fires, hence it being in this location. The other thing to point out is the sticker hung on the wall here from the 80s saying that uh, you must wear hearing protection in this space. So there isn't anything making too loud of a noise down there except for the various pumps that are there. When that's running in a enclosed metal space, um, it could cause long-term hearing damage. So let's keep heading down. So now we are one deck below on third deck and uh, just one deck above where the fuel actually is. This space you can see has brackets for halon gas as part of the fire suppressant system of last resort. Uh, you'll see that this was clearly a watch standards position. There's a ship service telephone here with the phone numbers for the A Division office, A Division birthing, uh, the fan room, the oil lab, damage control central, main control, forward and aft diesel, uh, and the machine shop. So it's always very telling based on these phones what numbers are on them, what spaces they thought that this watch standard was going to need to call with some frequency. There's a cabinet here which might have been for fuel bottles for testing or might have been for some sort of uh, other tools or equipment. And you'll see we've got purple JP5, green and red AFFF, and a green pipe that is the fire main. Normally, the fire main is painted red, but for whatever reason in this space, it is painted green. Green means seawater and usually refers to cooling water down in uh, where the engineering equipment is. 
and then down there, red would be fire and flushing. The final thing worth pointing out is the light. And so right now we've got fluorescent bulbs in there to last a while, but when the ship was built, these were intended for incandescent bulbs. If something happened and that bulb broke, you turn on the lights and there's still an arc between the, uh, the wires in there that could set off any fumes that might be in this space. And as, as you can tell already, fire is a huge concern with where this fuel is stored, particularly with sparks from the fumes. So this being inside of a pressurized, sealed, airtight porthole of its own, um, all but guarantees that that can't be busted. It looks like on the back side where this mirror is, there is a uh, set of screw holes that you can undo to change the bulb. So I suspect you cannot do it from this space. You've got to go into another space and do it. And this side is completely air and water tight. All right, let's head down the last level. All right, so now we are down in uh, the aviation gasoline storage compartment. This space is technically called 72042E, for those of you following from your booklet of general plans at home. Uh, notice we've only come down to fifth deck, but because the fantail is curving up at this point, uh, we are aft of the rudders here at frame 204. Uh, so the hole is much shallower. And these are the bilges beneath my feet here. So this is as low as you go on the ship, seventh deck. These, if you hadn't guessed by the purple coloring, are the aviation gasoline tanks. And it's interesting to us that uh, all the other fuel on the ship is stored in like void spaces along the hull of the ship, but these are actual literal tanks. Uh, the original booklet of general plans for this ship shows them as being in tanks like this, and it seems like uh, the, the exact rating of the aviation gasoline we carried changed as the planes got more modern, but it was always a much more high octane thing than the ship's own fuel or the diesel for the auxiliary diesel generators. Uh, so I'm not entirely sure why they would always be tanked like this. Uh, you'll notice the overhead is just a snaking series of pipes for the fuel and the AFFF, which we've been pointing out throughout the whole video. On that side of the compartment, there are several large pumps that would be used uh, to pump out the fuel. And on this side of the compartment, it seems like at some point a bulkhead has been installed I believe the original designs for this ship showed this going from shell plating to shell plating. If you can hear that background noise, it's a boat passing by. We can hear its propeller. We're below water right now. At some point, it seems like a bulkhead has been added on this starboard side. Um, maybe some other holding tank was added in that space. Uh, there, there are some heads around here. But I believe the original plans for the ship showed this space just taking up the entire side to side inside the shelf lighting. Uh, down here, you've also got lights inside of the uh, airproof pressurized canisters so they couldn't break. Um, and then we've got 80s era fluorescent fixtures that do not have the contact wires that are gonna create fire. Uh, but you can see they are powered from where there used to be a globe type fitting like we see in magazines, which would be the light bulb and then a glass globe around it so that the bulb can't break and set off a spark here in the space. So the fuel tanks are completely cleaned out, but they've got a manhole on top complete with a cork gasket. And uh, there's a ladder stored here in the overhead that if you need to climb inside to inspect it or fix the pump that's in there or whatever else the case may be, uh, you've got that option too. We're not gonna try that today, maybe a future video. What space on your ship had the most firefighting equipment in it? Let us know in the comment section down below.
Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State and also from a number of businesses and individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate the support you guys continue to give us. And there's a link down in the description if you'd like to donate to the museum. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about the museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.